Hi, my name is Adam and welcome to another Tericad T3 tutorial. Today we'll be creating a simple room in modeling design using a floor plan as reference. So um, to use the project files you can look in the video description at the bottom and that will give you a link to a zip file with all the folders in your need. So go ahead and click on the Tericad T3 Pro icon. I've already got a window open. So once your window pops up, click on modeling. And uh, this will take us through to the modeling section. Choose Intericad metric as your template. And now we can get started. So taking a look at the floor plan, we can see it's a very simple room. Uh, just some standard walls, two windows, a big sliding door, uh, some, recessed on the, some recesses on the ceiling and some lights running down each side of the room. Pretty straightforward. So to start drawing this room we're going to go to the structure menu, we're going to go to a new wall and uh, we're going to set the height at 2.8 meters. You're going to choose right as your drawing direction and then you just left click in the bottom left uh, drawing window to place your wall. And now if you wanted to snap at 90 degree angles just click on the little um, option at the bottom there that says also or you can press F8 on your keyboard. So now just drag the mouse in the direction you want the wall to run and type in its dimension. So that first dimension was 6000 so you type in 6000 you press enter. The next one was 7500 enter. Then looking at the floor plan again it's 4.5 meters across by 5.5 meters up so four five hundred five five hundred up so it's five five hundred then we're going to go one five hundred back to the left and you can just close up that wall using the C command and press enter so there we have our basic uh, structure done just tap escape on the keyboard to clear all your commands the next thing we're going to do is just put in a floor to do, to do that, go to the structure menu, choose perimeter, and then just click anywhere inside the, the room. If you, if you forget what to do, you can always check the command bar at the bottom there and it will tell you what to do. So just click inside the room. You'll see that a dotted perimeter has now appeared. This is going to be the base for all our floors and ceilings. So to put on our floor, go to the floor menu, choose floor and uh, the command bar at the bottom asks you to select the entities. That's basically asking you to select the perimeter we've just drawn. So to select it, you just left click on it. Once it's uh, highlighted, as you can see there, just right click. And then the command bar once again asks you to choose an internal point. So click anywhere inside that shape and give it a floor thickness. Uh, for a standard floor, I always just give it a thickness of minus 20. And the reason I say minus 20 is because I want it to drop below the base of the wall. Um, the command bar there asks you if you want to add a pattern to the floor surface. For now we're going to say no, so just press enter. And you'll see that our floor now pops up. Okay, tap escape to clear all commands if any are still selected. Next thing we're going to do is uh, go on to the ceiling. Now we can see we've got two uh, recesses over here. And this is basically created just by drawing rectangles and then using a ceiling command to create that, that recess. So if we go to the rectangle tool on the left over here, or go to draw rectangle, you can just roughly draw out a rectangle. You don't have to be uh, very accurate. And I'm going to choose rectangle again. So I'll just draw one over here. There we go. And now we've got our two rectangles. And if you take a look in the isometric view here, you can see that they've appeared on the floor. The next step in the process is to create those recesses. Now if I just show you um, some of the sample renders, we'll see exactly what these are meant to look like. So there you can see that those are going up by about 200. And we can just look at some more. There we go. All right. So what you're going to do is go to the ceiling menu, click on the ceiling again, and then choose normal lead ceiling. Once a dialog box pops up, 
you have a few options here. You see distance A. Distance A is the distance from the floor to the ceiling. So that's basically your wall height. So that's going to be 2.8 meters. And then distance B is going to be the recess. So we can leave that at, as 200. If you wanted to put light inside that recess, you could just choose light cove and edit these options here. But for now, we're going to use bulkhead. Click OK. Okay, the first part in this process is to select the main perimeter. Basically, what it says here in the um, command bar, so you select the perimeter first by left clicking on it. Once it's highlighted, right click, then select the two rectangles you've just drawn. Once those are selected, just right click again. And you'll see the ceiling automatically pop up in the 3D view. Okay, so um, looking at the plan view here, you can't really see what we've just done. That's because that layer is turned off. So to dip display that ceiling, go to the ceiling menu, choose 3D ceiling, and choose show. Now we can see the ceiling we've just created. Going back to the plan, um, we can see we've got two windows at the top over here and a big sliding door at the bottom. So to uh, put those into our drawing, we're going to go to the door and window library at the top, choose library, and then choose um, window, and uh, window again. Now this is the default library, so the uh, options here aren't uh, that great. Um, if you've got additional library uh, 2 installed, you can go and browse through some other um, options. So I'm going to uh, go down to the window library, the default one, and choose these windows here. Uh, it's called window 5. Just double click on the icon, and now we can input our dimensions. So we know that both those windows are 1.5 meters, so we're going to put 1.5. Uh, raise the elevation of the ground, so I'm going to make that at 800 and the window height I'm going to make, um, let's make those 1.3 meters high ok, click OK next thing you do is just select the wall you want to place the windows on so it's this wall at the top, left click on the wall and then just move your um, mouse to place the wall once it's in the position you just left click to place it and automatically it inserts itself into the wall there. Um, in your command bar it will ask you to um, select if the window is going to be swinging in or out. Uh, since this doesn't really apply you can press no for now and then well, end for no, press N again and then just click on the wall once more. I'm going to position my second window quite close to it. There we go. and uh, once we've put both of those wi those uh, windows in, you can just tap escape on your keyboard and this will bring up the uh, library again. Next we're going to put in that big sliding door. So you can just go to the door and window library and choose door and choose veranda door and then go down to this one over here. Just select it by double clicking on it. And if we go look at our floor plan, we can see that that door is 3249 uh, wide, so we just type that in, 3249, and a height of 2.4 meters, we will make that 2.5 meters. Click OK. And then just select the bottom wall by left clicking on it. Now since we want to place this directly in the center of the room, of the wall, um, you can just press C on your keyboard, and it will automatically place that on the cent in the center of that wall and then just uh, press enter twice to finish that command off. Tap escape on our keyboard to clear that command. And going back to uh, the floor plan, I think the last thing to do is just to put in the ceiling lights. So <coughs> we can go and get a better view of this floor plan here. And we can go to the ceiling menu, create 2D light symbols automatically and uh, from where it says arrangement and the shape just choose straight line now basically what this uh, function does is it will automatically place the, a set number of lights along a line that you draw so our floor plan has five lights running along that wall so under the lamps properties here you just type in five and I'm going to shrink this radius down a bit 
make that 50. Click OK once you're done. And then just click uh, left click at the sort of top left top right corner of the room to place your light uh, line. And then just drag your mouse down and then left click again to finish off that line. Okay, now you'll notice that the lights don't automatically appear on the top view, but in the isometric view they've appeared on the floor there. That's just because they haven't become 3D lights yet. If you look at your command bar there, it says, do you want to turn um, the 2D symbols into 3D lamps? The default is no, so if we just press enter now, they would stay as 2D light symbols on the floor. Because we want to make them 3D lights, you just press yes, or, um, or Y for yes, enter. And uh, then we've got some light parameters we can insert here. Uh, don't worry about these for now, just click OK. Next, I'll ask you to select the base surface. The base surface is the ceiling, so just left click on the ceiling and then right click to confirm, and you'll see that they've popped up as 3D lights. Right, so we just repeat the same process on the left hand side here. We go to the ceiling menu, create 2D light symbols automatically. Under shape, you choose straight line. Lamps, you choose 5, and radius will make 50. Click OK. Then you just left click to draw the, the light line. Left click to finish it off. So you do want to turn these into 3D lamps, so you say yes or Y, enter. Click OK when the uh, options box pops up here. And then just select ceiling. And then once that's selected, right click. And you'll see that your ceiling is now has now got uh, three lights on it. And that's basically it for the structure and modeling. Next, we're going to send this through to virtuality or the rendering section. So click on the virtuality menu, choose export. Uh, the command bar will ask you to select entities. That's just asking you to select everything here. So in your in your three D view here. Zoom until you've got a good view of the room, and then just drag a selection window around everything. And once it's highlighted, right click. Okay, the command bar at the bottom will ask you to choose an observer point. That's basically where you're going to be standing in the room when you send it through. So I'm just going to choose somewhere up here. So you left click, and you'll see a line now that attaches itself to your cursor. This line is basically the the direction in which you'll be looking. So just left click again to place the camera.